This is a brief lecture of Oh, What a Blow That Phantom Gave Me by the cultural anthropologist Edmund Carpenter, who was very influenced by the mass communication theorist Marshall McLuhan. Those who find the physical and social environments too demanding, too messy, sometimes seek to live as far as possible within media environments. See, uh, Carpenter knew even then that we would merge our identities with media, right? Like Facebook profiles and uh, posing for Instagram selfies and that kind of stuff. It's often been noted that those who most enjoy ads already do what? Carpenter asserts, what I've said of language applies to all media. It's often been noted that those who most enjoy ads already own the products. A product without advertising can be for many people a non-experience, and a thought or event that is excluded from all media or that doesn't lend itself kindly to any available medium is difficult to experience, even more difficult to convey. And so what he's getting at here is this idea that uh, advertisements, which are a 19th moving into the 20th century phenomenon because of the kinds of media that were available for the first time, right? Periodicals in the 19th century, right? Like magazines, and then moving into the 20th century with radio, and then the mid 20th century, we had television. And I guess mo moving up to television, we had movies. And so ads and identity took what? Took up a place within the modern psyche. This continues the theme. Carpenter asserts, ads increase participation and pleasure. They help define experiences. A product without advertising can be for many a non-experience. Any sensory experience is partly a skill and any skill can be cultivated. And so uh, it, in this sense, we kind of learn and develop our aspects of a culture because culture and skill in a way go hand in hand, right? Any sensory experience is partly a skill and any skill can be cultivated. But where electronic media prevail, they are the new environments. They even have the power to challenge language, man's earliest and perhaps most basic environment. TV deprives its viewers of speech. Those who live within it retreat from language. And, and so here, I mean, Carpenter is, 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 is looking at the wedge that electric media create with our kind of basic face-to-face -face interaction. TV deprives its viewers of what? Carpenter asserts, TV deprives its viewers of speech. Those who live within it retreat from language. And indeed, I mean, I think uh, these forms of mediated visual communication are forms of interaction without the voice, without language. So this quote here, we wear our media, they are our real clothes speaks to the kind of atmospheric extension of all media forms from the body, right? Cl clothing is, you know, perhaps really our first medium, right? Our first kind of intersection technologically with the environment, right? Getting, putting like a bear skin on or something like that. So uh, this idea that, you know, media is like clothing and extension, and then kind of what, in a sense, like it permeates there, it's atmospheric. And when, when I say that, it's like, you don't realize that you have clothing on, right? It's not like it, it's impinging on you. It just becomes a kind of extension of your skin. And, and like, 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 I mean, obviously you realize you're not naked, but you don't have any particular sensation that accords with clothing. So the quote, we wear on media, they are real clothes. It's, it's really quite interesting.
Writing in print relieve a strain upon memory and give time for deliberate consideration, but they do far more than this. The sensory mechanics of reading, plus the value accorded to the eye at the expense of all other senses, destroy the harmonic orchestration of the senses and reduce each image to one sense or another. And so the idea here is that vision becomes the superordinate sense and the other senses are minimized and um, what was kind of previously before like before writing and before kind of what you know the intense specialization of the eye uh, the the uh, carpenters kind of asserting like in in ordinary culture the vision doesn't take right and I say ordinary I, mean, I should say like um, earlier forms of human interaction earlier cultures um, the eye wasn't so dominant uh, Carpenter asserts I see loss of memory as a byproduct of literacy specifically literacy's role in shattering sensory orchestration one great advantage of memory loss is that one isn't burdened with masses of obsolete information the mind is left free to process new data and get on to still more data in a complex changing culture where the mind must process not store data this is an indispensable asset and and, and so like this idea literacy allows us to kind of freeze and codify information and store it so we don't have to store it in our heads right if you can put it on paper you don't have to remember it that's the idea you know and um so you know take for example like a recipe or something you know that ta that 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 is like 15 steps or 20 steps or e even um, like the instructions on how to put something together, right? Um, it's like literacy, you don't have to remember, like you don't have to become an apprentice, spend many years uh, becoming a master to know that information, right? You can just look, look it up. You can like Wolfgang Puck's cookbook. Uh, I mean, he's, he's done all the legwork and, uh, Okay, very good. Advertising isn't designed to train perception and awareness, but rather to insist that consumers merge with images and products. And so this theme of identity and advertising and media and culture and kind of merging everything of that together is um, it's pr pretty salient in Edmund Carpenter's work. Media are really environments. With all the effects geographers and biologists associate with environments, we live inside our media. We are their content. And so the idea is that all media are extensions of the self. And the self is actually the content of the medium because the media, right, the media do something to the sensorium. So this idea that we are the content of the media. For TV, and really all electric media, for TV addicts, reality seems messy, stale. They find daily life heartlessly indifferent to the needs of their imaginative life. And so you can really see this with influencers and, and you know people who have projected their identity into electronic form, right? The drama that they want to portray is very different than the ordinary drama of real life. Carpenter asserts that in the past, songs were inseparable parts of sacred ceremonies and dances they remain the identifiable property of local groups radio made them common property and and, and so you could see like you know maybe maybe like uh, southern country or something like that that one time might have been um localized within the south but then with radio it became popular art and everybody all over the world might enjoy it. It's no longer localized. 
What was the response of primitive cultural members looking into a mirror for the first time? And, and so why this is an interesting question is that it's the kind of same experience we all have with any new technology as an extension of the self. And uh, Carpenter says this, he says, certainly primitive cultural members initial reaction to large mirrors suggested this was a wholly new experience for them. They were paralyzed. After their first startled response, covering their mouths and ducking their heads, they stood transfixed, staring at their images, only their stomach muscles betraying great tension. In a matter of days, however, they groomed themselves openly before mirrors. And so there's a lot that's interesting packed into this quote. Uh, one, the new technology is kind of stunning or, um, you know, what? It, it, it is uh, overwhelming, I guess the word would be. And then pretty soon they get used to it. And so I have in parentheses here, us with our new gadgetry. The compass used for navigation and artillery used with precision belong to literate men. Both are extensions of the reader's eye. Right? And again, this idea of the eye as a superordinate sense that uh, destroys the orchestration among the senses, right? That, that the kind of harmonies. New media allow us to escape from old environments, but soon imprison us in new environments, namely themselves. For one brief moment, we have a clear image of ourselves and our environment, both hitherto invisible because they were too close. They became visible by becoming obsolete. You know, that is so interesting. I mean, it has to do with the ordinary and the taken for granted and how that kind of transforms. And then over time, it's, you know, we, we, we look at it and we don't recognize it the same way.